GFX.org and today I'll be showing you how to remove wrinkles, blemishes, etc. with this lovely woman here. And you can achieve flawless skin in your very own Photoshop. And you can see she has some wrinkles, um, sunspots, freckles, etc. that we can easily remove. Because you know we all have those off days where our skin isn't looking so good in real life, but we can retouch that in Photoshop very easily. And we'll be using these little tricks to get luminous and beautiful skin. So let's get started by opening your picture up in Photoshop by dragging it in. We'll go into File Open. And what you want to do is make sure you're working on your background layer first. Start off by using a tool called the Healing Brush Tool. And this is such a handy little tool just to remove those little blemishes, acne, um, sunspots, etc. And we're going to get a nice... Um, a 50 pixel brush um, depends on your picture and you want to hold down alt and select a nice patch of good skin to use as your as your base because we're going to duplicate that um, skin and use it to cover up our imperfections and you can see I'm just gently like dotting it on um, areas where it's a bit inconsistent and pretty much this tool is very very handy because it blends the good skin in by copying it and just merging it with the rest of the picture and it blends seamlessly, it's really great. So in case you didn't know, I decided to split this full tutorial into two separate videos. Part one will be retouching and part two will be getting that nice glowy skin tone. I'll put a link down below for part two. Remember to check that out after you finish this one. So now that I've finished retouching the nose and cheeks, I'm going to move onto the forehead and start getting rid of some wrinkles. And I'd always recommend you selecting a new patch of skin for your healing brush tool that is near the area that you're retouching as you're working. And this just makes sure that you have a consistency in texture and tone as you work around your face. And also remember to change up your brush sizes when you work so you're precise and can get rid of all those little imperfections easier. Now before I forget, remember you can leave a request for a new Photoshop tutorial. I've actually got a little list of requests that I'm going to try and fulfill in the next few days. I've been sick in a couple of days so I couldn't pop out a new video but I will get around to it. As I was working I noticed there was a little hair in the way um, and I want to remove that hair so I can keep retouching. So what we're going to use is the patch tool which is near your healing brush tool and you're going to select that and gives you the option to select around an object so I'm selecting around the hair very carefully just drawing around the area that you want to remove and then you want to drag this to a new area that is near the object and you can see it just takes care of it immediately and I'm just going to keep removing all these little annoying hairs in the way because it's in the way of my retouching and I really don't want to decrease my brush size to that small just to get that one little bit of wrinkle and so I'm just going to keep doing this and until I can easily retouch again and I'm going to whip out my healing brush tool again and just keep brushing it on. Also you can use the patch tool as a method to even out those skin imperfections but I prefer the healing brush tool because you can use your circle brush to its advantage and just really get those little spots. Oh and I was going to thank you guys for helping me reach over a thousand subscribers so thank you all so much for watching my videos and subscribing if you haven't already what are you waiting for? Click that button now and I will try and get more videos out soon. Now I wouldn't suggest using the patch tool for large areas um, such as that little flick of hair because it could get very very messy and look kind of weird but I am however going to get rid of some of the little bits of hair that are still coming out of that flick of hair and um, just using a very big selection with the patch tool I can easily just remove that. So now that I am finally done with the patch tool I'm going to go back in with my good old healing brush tool and just finish up on the forehead by spotting it on. Now you want to be very discreet with these kind of tools because you don't want a blurry low quality outcome. The last thing you want is a strange blurry forehead 
that will make everyone suspicious. So uh, do do make sure you use these tools very effectively. Always remember to just sharpen your image when you finish up. And also when you're saving, you want to make sure you either save as a .png or save as a .jpeg because .jpeg is really great for photography. It's got nice color payout. Once you finish clearing up all the major imperfections on your skin, you can finish up with some finishing touches with a small um, healing tool. And I'm just going back on the nose and just getting rid of some redness here. Um, I wouldn't be too worried about redness because we can even that out later with some adjustments. But I'm just going under the eyes as well and just taking care of those dark circles. And just gently dot it on. You don't want to use a nice big brush and just splat that on there. That's part one of how to get full skin done. If you want to keep going to part two to learn how to get golden luminous skin, please do feel free to do that. I've got a link around here. Just click it. Um, if you don't, I hope you like this tutorial. Remember to um, favorite and thumbs it up. And remember to also subscribe to the channel and check out more videos. See ya!